Hello and welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use geometry nodes to make some cool uh, things in Blender and I'm just going to be going over the basics so you don't need any experience in geometry nodes but I do recommend you have some experience uh, within Blender itself I'm not going to go over how you like uh, move about in Blender just what you need to do in the geom no geometry nodes itself so let's just get started. I'm going to delete the default scene by pressing A and then X and then deleting everything. And then I can add in a plane by pressing Shift A and then a plane. I can zoom in to this and then change this editor type to the uh, geometry notes editor. And then we can add a new geometry notes. We can call this whatever we want, but for now I'm just going to leave it as the default. And what I want to make is a really cool uh, noise pattern that displaces this plane, which you can uh, change just procedurally in the modifier panel right there, where the geometry node is also uh, located. So to do that, we need some geometry, since right now we only have like uh, four vertices, so we need to subdivide it. We can do that by pressing Shift A and then searching for the subdivide mesh node and just placing it in the geometry and the output. Right now with one, uh, it basically just has a cut here. Uh, we cannot see this here. Uh, this object will basically just always be a plane in the edit mode, but we can uh, see the changes in the object mode. So we can set the subdivide mesh to something like six, which will be pretty much the same thing as adding a um, subdivision service modifier set to simple uh, to six as well. So it's pretty much the same thing. So now we have the extra geometry. We can displace it by adding a set position node and just placing it in between here. And then we can change the offset here to change the location of the plane. Uh, but if we do this, it will just change every single vertex to that location. So for example, this vertice right here in the corner will be moved uh, 0.82, uh, but this right corner also gets moved the same. So we want to change that. So we can drag off of here and add in a combined XYZ node. So now we pretty much just have the same thing as right here, but then we can uh, change these manually. And now I want to add in a Musgrave texture or any other texture that you want. And then we can change the height to the Z. So everything moves up uh, according to the Musgrave texture. Nothing moves to the X or the Z Y, but everything just moves in the Z direction, as we can see here. We can change the scaling and everything we want. We can also add some more geometry. Uh, we cannot change it right here, but if we just click on here and just type in 8, it will add more subdivisions. And then you can change uh, the node however you like. Just the same thing as you can do with everything. This is much better than um, doing it with a texture, since you can actually scatter things on here, which I will show you uh, after we finish the uh, landscape. So you can do that as well. I'll talk about that later. So right now we have some mountains, which is really cool. And if you want to change the height of the mountains, we actually have to add in a math node. So shift A, add in a math node right here. And if you uh, add a add node, you can just change the uh, location, which is not really uh, what we want. So I uh, opt for the multiply or the divide node. It's uh, just up to preference. With multiply, the lower you go, the flatter it will be. And with divide, the higher you go, the flatter it will be. So it's up to preference, but I like to go with multiply, since it just makes more sense that if the value is lower, the mountains are lower. And if you clamp this, these values, um, everything under, as you can see, everything that's uh, below the plane just gets clipped and stays flat. So you could change that if you want, but uh, I don't really have to. Something else you just can do is um, grab this geometry. If you want a water plane, you can just grab the geometry and then add in a joint geometry right here. And then just grab this and place it here as well. So now the original plane gets placed uh, just exactly where the plane should be. And then the other plane, uh, which is this plane, we subdivide and then we uh, displace. So it's basically just uh, two objects together, one simple plane and one subdivided plane. So now you can uh, set the material on the water plane uh, with a water material, with a set material node, as you can see right here. And then you can just change the material here for the water material. 
and then you can duplicate this and place it here for the uh, ground material so as you can see the geometry nodes are pretty simple if you know which nodes there are uh, most of these uh, like uh, the Musgrave texture combine are also in the shader editor uh, so it's really easy to learn uh, but then uh, things like the set position nodes are really different uh, for some reason like normally you'd have a displace node uh, or a displace modifier or you'd have a displacement uh, node in the shader editor or something like that but right here in geometry nodes you have the set position node uh, other things in geometry nodes are more based on the modifiers itself so like the subdivide mesh you also have a subdivision surface here uh, as you can see here and you pretty much just have a lot of these um, modifiers in the geometry nodes itself you can do a lot of things in geometry nodes but um, i just like geometry nodes because it's everything uh, together it's all together right here so you don't have to go to the modifier and then to the shader editor and then do something else and then uh, change the mesh. It's just all uh, right here and all procedural as well. So what we can do with the mountain now is if we want to add a fall off, we can add in a gradient texture. We can also uh, preview uh, textures in here if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, which you can do in the edit preferences and then just uh, type in node wrangler here, right there under the add-ons. Then you can press uh, Control shift and, and left mouse click and then you can just preview geometry and then you can see what the gradient texture looks like. For the factor we cannot actually add a mapping node by pressing Control T like in the um, like in the shader editor. So what we're going to do here is just grab the position node or the normal. Uh, either one. The normal works with the normal and the position just the position. It's uh, basically just generated uh, coordinate, I think. If we change this from linear to quadratic, uh, quadratic swear, sphere, I mean, we see this um, fall off where in the middle everything is one and then at the end everything is black. And what we can do now is if we go back to our uh, subdivided plane, we can and multiply the position with this quadratic sphere and everywhere where it's one it should be the same and then at the end edges it should be zero if you want to change the size of um, this gradient we can add in a position node and then add in a factor math node and set the position to the first factor and then set this to multiply and then you can just multiply the sphere and change the radius so you can have a gradual fall off something like this is really nice it's uh, subtle but still gives that fall off you want if you want to change the intensity you could also uh, just add in another multiply texture so the mountains stay high in the middle and then just stay low the edges you can also just change the seed if you set this to 4d just like the uh, shader editor which i also made a video about so geometry is pretty much just the same thing uh, but you have some extra options and you have some more things to worry about just the basics is uh, pretty much the same thing so this will be my mountain and now we're going to go over to the scattering of objects which is also a really handy tool and you can bundle these together. So you can just stay in the same um, environment and just make both of these, the, your landscape and your scattering. So you don't have to go to a add-on, which I always do, and go into the um, particles, of course. To do this, we will need our uh, landscape right here. Make it a little bit bigger and then change the seed a little bit. Oh, this, this works well. So now what we can do is just distribute points on our faces. So that's basically just adding in a particle system. So it's basically just a particle system and then everything will be scattered on, on uh, the particles. So to do this, we will first need our the subdivided mesh. We don't want to scatter on the plane. So this has to happen before the joint geometry and preferably before the set material as well. So we can do that. Just uh, make some space here. 
So after we've um, displaced our environment, we can just add in a distribute points on faces, which adds some random points on our uh, object. But as you can see, we lose our mountain right here. So we have to drag this into the joint geometry. And I actually made a mistake. We do need the set material to be before the distribution. And just place it um, right here. We have our set position and just use the landscape without our texture for the distribute points. And as you can see here, uh, just everything is on our plane. If you want, you can just change the size of these points by uh, setting the uh, set point radius, I believe. So you have some uh, small points and it's not so uh, annoying to look at. And these points aren't actually geometry. They are just um, uh, basically some coordinates for us to scatter objects on. You can also change the seed here, which is really uh, handy. And it works basically just the same as the particle system. You have the same seed here. Well, we have a density and not a number, but it's basically the same. We can delete that again. Uh, right now we have these points. And what we can do now is just... So what we can do with these coordinates now is just scatter some objects on there. So the note for that is, uh, is instances on points. I had the uh, wrong one, which was instances two points. So don't make that mistake. We need this one. And right now all the um, uh, points disappear, but we can set our instance here, which we can just make a cube, for example. And as you can see, a lot of cubes are scattered on here, which adds, adds this uh, really uh, rough look, which is also pretty cool. Uh, but a more practical use for this is just dragging out and setting a object info geometry. And right here, you can select your scatter object. So if we just make a tree asset. So I'm going to add in a tree uh, right here. And just scale it down a little bit and move it out of the way. We can set our uh, tree as the object. And it will be scattered on here. Just change the density so there's not that much trees. And we can look at it nicely. So as you can see, all of our trees are here. You could probably also do a collection info. Yeah, right here. And then you can uh, drag that to the instance as well. So if I change the density, more points will appear. And I can change the seed. For the rotation, we can use a random value. And then just set the uh, max on the Y and the Z to like 0.1. So it's only a little bit. And then on the Z, just one or two and it will be different for every single tree. To not scatter in the water right here, we have to do the same thing we did with the clamping and just make a selection of everything that's below our plane and then delete every single point that's under uh, our threshold. So if we have our faces uh, or, or I mean our points here, I can add in a delete points, uh, delete geometry node and set this to point. And then with the selection, and then we can just use this value uh, as our selection. And we have to invert it, so minus 0.5. And everything will now be on our mountains. So this is a really easy way to not have to weight paint, which uh, I really like uh, because I hate weight painting. It never works. We can also change the scaling uh, of this instance uh, with a random value. We need a uniform scaling, so a combine XYZ. So we can set this to a random value, which will be a float, and just set this to every single one. And then just set the uh, minimum to something like 0.9 or 0.8 or however small you want the smallest tree to be. This also works just the same as our uh, particle system, uh, which I have gone over a lot of times. If you set the render to the object, you get a scaling, uh, the scale randomness, and that's basically just what we're doing here. And of course you can duplicate this a lot of times to add some rocks, some grass, and pretty much anything you want, some lily pads on the water maybe. 
And this distribute points on faces is also really uh, powerful since it works without uh, the use of geometry. So uh, normally I would weight paint where I want my lily pads to be. Uh, and my water would have to be really uh, densely subdivided. But for this I don't really have to since I can use a musgrave texture for a mask. And then use the delete geometry to delete all the points that I don't want. So that's a really cool method to uh, making uh, things in geometry nodes, uh, especially with scattering. You can scatter objects where you would normally uh, not really be able to scatter somewhere. And this is basically it. I think I've shown you a basic understanding of the geometry nodes. If there are still some things unclear, you can leave a comment and I will happily respond. I always respond. You can join the Discord and I can help you there. Um, it's a lot easier because I can work with screenshots there. Okay, it's me again from the following day. Uh, I forgot to mention the same thing I forgot to mention while doing the um, shader editor. So here I am again. Uh, so a really important thing is you want full control over this and you don't want to look at this uh, node system to change the density, for example. So what you can do is you can just grab the density and just place it in the group input and then it will appear on the right side here at the modifier panel and then you can change everything here which is a really useful uh, way of changing uh, the values so what i usually do is just uh, take the seed here and the scale of the terrain maybe the uh, intensity of the terrain that's something you'd want to uh, change as well and just uh, place them all over here and then rename them to whatever i want and that's pretty much it you can also drag the materials here and to still remember which material was which, you can just rename them here. Uh, for example, just the terrain material and then water material. And then uh, people that use your geometry node setup can change those here with all the materials they've imported themselves. And it's a really neat way of um, having some control. So I will leave this geometry notes uh, setup in the um, description on my Gumroad. It will be under the monthly support where a lot of these things are. Uh, everything I make, I will post from there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you uh, learned something. And I hope you will use Geometry Notes uh, in your renders since it's really, really powerful.